Hey everyone, this training video, this is going to be our beginner entry level excavator training. Check this out. Hey everyone, this is uh, replacing our excavator 101. If you've seen that, that's one of our original training videos. It's almost two years old. So we thought we'd do a fresher one. So it's 2020 right now. We want to do a beginner level. So I'll caution you up front. If you are an experienced operator, this is probably not going to be the video for you because we're just going to go over very basic entry level controls. As with all of my videos, what I say, I am not an expert, not claiming to be. I'm just going to kind of show you what I've learned. Um, and I think it's a really good overview. We've also already done the site inspection. So we know where we're digging. It's our training area. So we know all the utilities that are here. And then finally, the pre-op inspection, probably one of the most important pieces before operating operating any, any heavy equipment is doing a pre-op, which again, we have a separate video on that that covers that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get in this machine. Now the first thing on all heavy equipment, uh, every single piece of heavy equipment will have their door lock. So these doors are designed to lock open and whether it's a wheel loader, bulldozer, they all do that. Uh, it is important. I know it sounds really, uh, people are like, why does this really matter? I'll show you why. What a lot of operators will do is they end up swinging it open and without latching it, either one, a gust of wind comes and bangs that thing in the back of your head, or two, if I try and grab this handle up here with this door not secured, it's not a very safe entry. So make sure your doors are always locked open. And then with all pieces of equipment, they do have release levers right inside the door there. You just kind of have to know depending on the brand you're running there, okay? The next piece is three points of contact. Anytime you get in or out of equipment, it's always important to maintain three points of contact. That's where most incidents happen. So you want to grab both handlebars, your foot down there, and maintain that contact. Once you're in, it's always important to put your seatbelt on first. Okay, and then that same door will lock right on the inside there. And there we go. After that, I'm gonna key it on. Okay, so uh, today we're running uh, Komatsu PC210. Uh, there will be a link to this uh, unit down in the description. Um, but I like to do, with all of our training videos, we like to keep it somewhat generic, just so this can apply to really any excavator. Um, so I'm gonna go over the controls uh, with the Komatsu one, but also just kind of keep it a little bit vague on it. So as you saw, I keyed it on. Uh, first thing is always your display. There's always going to be some monitor or something in there that does. These machines are pretty sophisticated, so making sure it goes through, see if there's any error codes or anything like that. You obviously do not want to start it uh, if you have any of those. Then after I turn it on, if beginning of shift, you always want to make sure you have your fuel. Um, if it's got diesel exhaust in one of the newer machines, we'll have DEF. There's going to be a level there, and you're going to want to monitor all that. Okay, so that's that. I have machine idling right now. Seatbelt was on. Outside of that, the most important safety piece in a excavator is the safety lock lever. There is a red little knob, the Komatsu has these little knobs, knobs on the side, that's basically flipped down. Uh, if I pull back on it, it raises the arm up. It's like a parking brake. So any excavator you get into is going to have that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I've seen, you know, some cat, uh, I think a John Deere will have an arm that pushes forward. It's always going to be something near the door. They like to make it where if it's engaged, you can't get in or out of that equipment without uh, stepping over it. So that's a really good indicator for you. If you see it in the doorway or anything like that, that machine is live. But with that down, when those things are engaged, even with the machine running, I can touch anything in here. Nothing's gonna operate on this machine until that lock lever is engaged, okay? Uh, other than that, just basic thing, climate control. You know, we're, we're in newer equipment, so we're a little bit spoiled in there. Uh, but also things like just knowing your seat, there's, uh, these, the newer machines are designed for comfort because if an operator is going to be in this machine for 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, the more comfortable they are, the safer and more efficient they are. So just understanding, it's little things like that, making sure you know the piece of machinery you have uh, on different options you can do there. And then on the right side here is where all my throttles over here, some of my key to turn on, everything else. Uh, and then I've got lighting control for my Komatsu on the right. On the left is where I have my stereo control. Most of these are equipped with radios, things like that. So, put that down. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and engage the safety lock lever. Now, with this, again, I'm gonna really dumb this down one at a time. Uh, right is your boom and bucket, left is your stick and swing. Now, we are showing you ISO standard controls. This is, you might hear them call it cat controls. 
I would say 90% of the people I see use ISO. Personally, I think it's the easiest. Obviously, I learned ISO, CAT controls, standard controls. That's, that's what I've used. Uh, SAE is the other, uh, sometimes we'll call them uh, John Deere controls. Almost all newer machines have a valve in the back that you can switch. We have a whole separate video on ISO versus SAE. There's a lot of confusion in the terminology. Honestly, I really don't care that much about that. Just get comfortable with one way uh, because once you learn that, that's primarily going to be, I, I can't run a machine in John Deere controls. I look like riding a bike backwards. Uh, so you're going to want to learn that. Now, with my right hand, boom and bucket. Uh, if I pull back on this right joystick, that's going to raise the boom up. Throttle this up all the way. If I go right hand forward, it'll bring that boom back down. If I go to the right, it's going to open my bucket. And if I go to my left, it's going to close the bucket. So right is your boom and bucket controls. Left is your stick and swing, okay? Stick, sometimes they call it a dipper. Uh, I'm trying to think of other terminology, really. There's, especially around the, the world, there's different terminology. Uh, but stick is basically the arm connecting the bucket to the boom. If I push forward, push the stick out. And if I pull back on that, it's going to bring that stick back in. And then left or right is this your swing. So swing, swivel, again, one of those terminologies that can change. So if I go left, it's gonna swing the machine left. If I go right, it's gonna swing the machine right. And then there is no hard stop on these swings. They will just go all the way around. Now, some little pieces there uh, that I wanna go over additionally. Almost every machine, so you saw I did one at a time, that's how we like to start our training, is just really dumbing it down. Obviously, we start getting ding, we'll be using multiple. But it's always so good to know your limitations on your machine from the very beginning. Generally, most buckets will not be able to hit you and hit the cab. They're designed. So if I bring this in right now, you'll see how it gets right there in front of this cab, but it won't hit it. Um, now, use caution. A couple of things. First of all, materials in the bucket. If you were to come in fast, this thing will stop on its own. Material could absolutely come out. So yeah, that's how you crack a windshield. The other thing is, this is under a standard circumstance, standard bucket. Uh, if you have a quick attach on, any other accessories, I usually like to know the machine when I get in it if there's, uh, if there's that capability. So sometimes I'll actually test it before I get going, uh, just to know. So sometimes I've seen where you can actually hit touch the cab if it's got a different shaped bucket, if it's got a quick attach on there, things like that. The other thing, as much as it can't hit the cab, it's not true with the, the tracks themselves. So. If you see this, if I dig off the corner here, I absolutely can hit my corner my tracks there. So that's where you always want to be careful if you're digging at a 45 and like that, you absolutely could pull a track off there or damage your tracks. So that's why generally we like to be a little further out from the machine as much as possible. The other thing is just knowing your limits on your cylinders and everything like that. You know, they do have hard stops. So if I go all the way on my bucket, it'll stop on its own. Generally, you try and avoid hitting those. So I don't, the end of those cylinders with the hydraulics, I don't like to go all the way till I just, it stops on its own. So once you kind of understand the machine better, that's where you'll try and stop before you get to that point. Now, driving position. Generally, now these, these are your two track pedals. This is your, you see my left, if I push forward, it goes my left one forward. If I pull back, left one back. If I take my right, push forward, and I pull back. So they're independent of each other. They are connected to foot controls. Now, for a new operator, I really try and keep it simple. Your hands are with your joysticks, which are the top of the cab. Your hands then go over here to drive the machine. It's one or the other, it's not both. That is not how you're going to operate long-term. I just think for the beginning, it's really easier to learn. So otherwise, eventually these are connected to foot controls. So that's how an operator would do it. But I do recommend in the beginning just getting used to either this or this. Now you do want to be squared up with your tracks. Uh, generally I like to look out over the bottom window and I can see if my lines are lined up with the tracks. The machine, you can drive it at any configuration. Like these things will work no matter what. It just gets really difficult to understand orientation when you're driving. So it's usually a lot easier. Just make sure you're squared up to your tracks so that way you know it's nice and centered on there. Um, it also is, the tracks are the longest 
part there. So if you have a counterweight behind you, uh, it only is gonna it's gonna limit your ability to hit stuff if you're going off the side something like that. Now, driving position with the arm, different. Uh, you'll see, even see in comments. Um, I generally have my boom up stick it, uh, stick straight up and down bucket. Uh, I don't know, two a foot or two off the ground with the bucket horizontal. It's what I like to do. I feel like it gives me the best visibility. Uh, if you're on a job site with any potential overhead hazards, a lot of guys will advocate to having this curl all the way in. You can see how it can tuck everything. And almost like this. The problem, as you can see out my right side here, I've lost all of my visibility on this side. So I can't really see. However, it is the safest from an overhead perspective. Um, so it really just depends. I don't, there is no right or wrong to anything I'm saying here. People have different methods. Just learn the method you like. Uh, but generally you don't want to be anything where you're blocking right at head level, you know, so you don't really want to be up here or anything like that. I want to be a few feet off the ground, something like that. Keep it kind of low and tight, but that also to me is the safest. So I'm going to drive forward here a little bit. So we'll just stay here now for digging a couple of things. I generally recommend, first of all, lining up to dig straight in line. The machine is most stable when you're in line with those tracks. The moment you start digging off 45 or 90, um, you'll notice the machine, it's a lot easier to tip on there. So you have the most weight this way. I generally recommend you should be digging over the idlers. So if you go over our pre-op or any other videos, the track system on our excavator, the front are called the idlers. Uh, it's just a big sprocket basically there. The back is the drive motors. Uh, that's where actually the power or where the tracks move. There's a couple reasons you want to dig with that in the rear. One, that's your most expensive part, the drive motors in the back. So if you were to do any damage, you'd want that. You want to protect it. That's why it's in the back. The second is just from a counterweight perspective. You have the counterweight on the machine, but if you add the weight from those uh, drive motors, uh, that's where you're all got the weight in the back there. So that's generally what I will advocate for. It's not going to be the solution every single time, but if you can't control it, to me, that's the best. Um, there are some people who talk about different orientation where if they were, depending if they were logging, I've seen some guys comment this, which I wouldn't even thought about it, but it makes sense. If for some reason an obstruction, something did come through that window, you'll notice it would actually push these things back. So that's the other reason I have the drive motors because it would actually push you away versus if something came through that window and pushed on it, you'd be pushed into it. Again, it's, it's funny, I've never, some of those things you don't really understand, I don't think of them, but other guys have seen that, so. Now with that said, to dig, I extend this all the way out and go stick out. I'm just gonna show you how to do these really basic on we brand new clients on our site. I always recommend stick all the way out for a brand new operator. This is not how an expert's gonna operate, I'll tell you that, you're usually gonna have the stick maybe 45 in, uh, but I like to show, to me distance is your friend in the beginning, so I like to start all the way out. I come down then, I'm about a foot off the ground. Then I usually, again, this is not necessarily gonna be the strategy. There, to me, there's phases of learning any piece of equipment. So don't think that the first way you learn it the first day is gonna be how you're gonna do it all the time. Uh, but right here, I like to have my teeth straight down uh, before I go into my first scoop. When you get better at this, you're actually gonna want those teeth kinda of at a 45 in, and you're gonna kinda of take layers off once you get better at this. Uh, you don't really, if there's a, any kind of uh, utility or anything underground, you have the potential to hit that if it's down there. So you wanna try and be able to scrape small layers off. Now, if I put the bucket down, teeth in. So that's right, I'm doing this all just one of the, you see I'm doing one motion at a time. Right hand curls it, right hand back, raises that boom up. Get a, I don't know, five, six feet off the ground. And then I'm gonna swing left. I like to see, I can see left, I can't see right. Again, there's a lot of people that disagree on which side to dump on. It really depends on your site. But if I can choose, I like to be able to see to the left where I'm going. And then you're five or six feet over, and then I'm going to dump. Right there. Come back. Now this one, if I go a little bit more aggressive with the teeth straight down, and again, you would not do this on a job site uh, just because you don't want to go too deep and maybe find something that might be underground. You want to do layers. But you'll see this will actually pick my machine up so I can actually lift my tracks up off the ground. So you don't necessarily want to have those tracks off. And then you just curl it up. Now you'll hear these things will normally get stuck. They're going to get to a point. If you can, you hold that bucket curl and you're pulling, I'm pulling back. I'm doing two at the same time here. So I'm pulling back and I'm curling. We have a very soft sand. It breaks right through it. A lot of times, depending on your material, it may not do that for you. Raise that up and then swing over and then dump. 
And then the final thing here, we're gonna have boom up. And this is where you start bringing that stick in. So the teeth are straight down, about 90 degrees there. And then I curl that right in there and just kind of building a trench towards me. But again, I'm going through a large swath of an area right there. Raise it up there, come over, and then to extend it out, left hand forward will go out with it. Trying to hit that, I'm gonna bring the boom down. Now you saw those are all kind of one at a time. Eventually after you get better, the thing you'll practice is doing this in layers and doing multiple. So now I have both hands on both joysticks. I'm coming in, see my stick up, stick in, boom up, and I'm curling at the same time. Eventually this is what you'll end up doing. You'll end up taking layers off. There is no right or wrong here. The best way to get good at this is just seat time. The other thing I've seen if you are trenching, I'm, we'll do another video, it gets a little bit more advanced, but once you scrape, you'll see my teeth are more to 45. So you see how that first one, I have a big old pile of dirt right in front of me. So the other thing that's really valuable is you back off your stick a little bit. Let that material fall either in your bucket or down into the trench versus building a big old pile like I did in the first one. And then I'm out there. So that's digging. And then real quick on some backfilling, same concept, just reverse. So I'm gonna take some scoops out of it. The difference here is you don't necessarily have to raise it. I can try, you'll see these things won't, they don't have a ton of lateral force, but if I raise it up a little bit, you can kind of swing material over as well. So I'm kind of scraping through it and I'm swinging at the same time. Now you will, lateral force on an excavator, it's not great, it does the pins on your bucket. It's not something you wanna get used to, but to do a fine grade or even some maneuvering at the end, that's fine. More of your power in an excavator is in that arm, pulling it towards you. So you'll see how I'm kind of scraping it here, curling that bucket, and then over. And then eventually, this is where you just wanna flatten the bucket out. And I can use the side of the bucket, kind of like a dozer blade almost, I slide through this. You don't ever want to do this with a lot of material. Again, this will put a lot of strain on the side of a side load on that bucket. So it's not great for maintenance perspective on your pins and everything. But again, if you're just trying to finish it up at the end of the day, this is most likely going to be your best bet at getting that. And then the other thing is you can use the back of the bucket to push material out. So if I use this, I call it raking where you kind of push material out like that. And that's that. So that's, again, beginner level. I'm not gonna go over a lot of the specifics here. It's very entry level. Um, and then finally here, I'm gonna go over parking real quick. Always have that bucket. Anytime, any hydraulic power or any hydraulics on equipment, you wanna have them resting on the ground. So you put that flat in the ground. With the excavator then, safety lock lever here. Put that down, nothing will move. Throttle it down right there. Uh, for the newer machines, they really don't recommend letting them idle very long. Komatsu really says 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, they don't have, it's not like the old days with the turbos and everything where they want them to run. Uh, because these run on diesel exhaust, uh, they want them, they, they burn that off best when they're at workload. They don't, they don't do great at idle. So after that, turn that off. And then I'll step out. Again, always make sure that door locks like that. So I have something. Then I'm going to get out three points contact. And then my release. Okay, everyone, so that was our beginner entry level excavator training. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please put in the comments below any tips or tricks you might have learned. And again, stay tuned. We'll do some updated on a little bit more advanced skills in the next video. Thanks for watching. Coming in.